teach you how to make color prints that match your monitor using an Epson printer and using ICC profiles for the paper and ink or the paper and the printer that you're using. An ICC profile is a is a file that describes the color characteristics of a uh, of a device that renders color, like a monitor or a printer. Um, and printer ICC profiles um, aren't just about the printer. There's specific profiles for the paper, the printer, the paper, and the ink that are used. Um, so for in every combination of of paper, ink, and printer, you'll need a separate ICC profile. Um, Epson provides those for their papers, and most of the uh, third-party paper manufacturers like Ilford and, and, and such, those, those companies all pro also provide ICC profiles for all their papers for a variety of different printer models made by Epson and Canon and others. And so the first thing you need to do is obtain an ICC profile for the paper that you're going to use and for, and for your, your printer. So I went to Ilford's website and I got um, the uh, profile for the paper that I'm using here, which is the Ilford, um, the Ilford Gold Fiber Gloss Paper. And I'm using it on an Epson P800 printer with photo black ink. And so there's a, there's a specific profile for that. So that's the, that's the one I obtained and installed on my computer. The place to install the picture, install them on your computer, um, look, in the look in the description for this and I'll have it typed in there because it's, it's a long string of um, file names. So it's easier for you to just read it than listen to me tell you on this with my voice. Um, once you've got it installed, then you need to open Photoshop um, because if you have Photoshop open when you install an ICC profile, um, it may not pick it up. Photoshop may not pick up the ICC profile. You need to quit Photoshop and then reopen it after you've installed the profile on your computer system. And we're doing this with a we're doing this with a Mac. Um, I think that everything that I'm showing you here would work more or less the same on a Windows PC, but the printer drivers are arranged a little bit differently. So this is this is going to be mostly a Mac centric um, tutorial. So I've I've got a picture here that's ready to work. I've got um, the photograph I've taken. I resized the uh, print to the size I'm going to make. It's going to be a six by eight print. And I'm going to print it on eight and a half by eleven paper. Now, I always recommend you resize the pictures in Photoshop before you print them because when you resize a picture, it needs to be sharpened before it's printed after it's resized because any resizing reduces um, edge sharpness. And so by sh sharpening the picture afterwards, you bring that back before you make the print. You can resize a file in the, pr in the uh, um, Photoshop printing dialog box, but it doesn't give you that sharpening you need if you do that. So I don't recommend doing that. I recommend doing the resizing before you start printing. So we have our picture here. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to um, disconnect this from Photoshop's uh, um, menus at the top here. I want the, I want the picture to be able to be floated around. And then we need to duplicate the picture. Now, the duplicate docks itself to this one. And I need to separate it off, too, because I need them to be separate from each other because we need to be able to look at both pictures at the same time. Now, the reason we're doing this is because um, with ICC profiles, you can actually preview on the screen what the print's going to look like before you make the print. And typically, the prints will look a little bit darker in the print than they do on the screen. Well, this lets you correct for that. So what you want to do to do this is you want to take the original picture, not the duplicate, but the original one, make sure it's the one that's, that's in front, go up here to View, Proof Setup, and then choose custom. And this dialog box is going to come up and it's going to ask you um, where it says device to simulate, you're going to find the profiles out of the long list of profiles here that you're going to use. Um, this is the profile for, for the uh, paper that I'm using and the printer I'm using. Ilford in their, in their wisdom have given their profiles names that are almost indecipherable. There's like a, a code that all these letters stand for that you can look up on their website that tells you exactly what paper and, and, and printer and whatever it's for. Um, but take my word for it, this is the one for the uh, Epson P800 with the Ilford um, gold fiberglass paper. So we'll choose it. Um, next you're going to see preserve RGB numbers. Leave that unchecked. You don't want that to happen. 
um, rendering intent. Um, there's two different rendering intents you can choose from. Well, actually, there's four, but there's two of them that are used by photographers. Relative colorimetric is one, and the other is perceptual. And if you look, you can see when I chose perceptual, the image changed in appearance some. If we go back down to relative colorimetric, we see that it looks, it looks different still. Now, which one should you choose? Um, my experience has been that some profiles work better in perceptual and some work better in using the relative colorimetric mode. It also depends, too, on like what colors are in your picture, because if you have a picture where a lot of the colors in the picture are outside the color gamut that the printer is capable of reproducing, um, you'll usually get better results using the perceptual mode. Where if the picture contains mostly colors that the printer is capable of rendering, then you'll usually get better results with the relative colorimetric mode. Try both and see which one you like best. Um, all, you, all you're going to do is waste a few sheets of paper and you'll learn something from it. Because it's, I can't give you a, I can't give you an absolute, you know, ironclad guarantee that one is better than the other. Because it really depends on the picture that you have and the characteristics of the uh, ICC profiles you were provided. Because some profiles were designed to work better with one rendering intent or the other. Um, the other rendering intents here, now we've talked about perceptual and relative colorimetric. Those are the only two that are ever used for photography. You don't want to use the saturation and absolute colorimetric modes for any photographic printing. That's stuff that's used in the graphic arts world. It's not something that's going to give you good results with photographs. Um, for this picture, I'm going to use the relative colorimetric mode because I've, te I've tested in the past and it works well for this. So the next thing you see is black point compensation. Make sure that that's checked. Um, display options. Um, simulate paper color, color and simulate black ink. When you check the simulate paper color, the black ink one also simultaneously gets checked. And that's what you want to do, because you want to see what it's going to look like on the paper. So once we've got all these things set, what we're doing is we're setting up a, uh, what's called a soft proof, which is a, a proof on the screen showing what it's going to look like when it comes out on the printer. So once we've got all this stuff set for the proof condition, we click OK. And now we compare these two pictures. Now, the copy that we did here, we'll notice now that it looks brighter than this one. When the, when the, the uh, soft proofing mode is turned on, this picture has become darker and a little bit lower in contrast compared to the other. The colors haven't really changed much, but the, uh, the brightness and contrast have. So what we're going to need to do now is we need to make some alterations to the original here to lighten it back up so that it looks like the uh, like the uh, copy of it does, because our goal here is we want we want the print that comes out of the printer to look like this. So we have to alter this by lightening it so that it, so that when it comes out of the printer it will look like this, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is since we have the proofing mode turned on, we're going to I'm going to do this using an adjustment layer, and the reason I use adjustment layers is because Adjustment layers can be deleted later. So if you have, a, um, if you print this with one type of paper and you have an adjustment layer set for that one, you could turn that layer off later and create a new adjustment layer if you decide to print it on a different printer or a different paper, which re would require a different amount of correction. So to do that, we go to the layers palette here, click the little button that looks like a half, half light, half black circle, choose curves, and then we have our curves dialog box. If you don't understand how to use curves, um, I have a separate tutorial for that. There's a written version of it on my website, CrawfordPhotoSchool.com, and there's also a YouTube video. Um, if you've never used curves before, I recommend you stop this video now and go watch the curves video or, or read my tutorial so that you understand what, what's going on here. Um, just to make it real quick, though, the, the line here basically represents the tones in the picture. The upper parts of the line represent the light tones. The lower parts represent the dark tones. And the middle parts of the line represent your midtones. And generally for printing, what you want to do is you just want to lighten the midtones some. So if you grab this and you start lightening it, you'll see the picture starts getting lighter and lighter and lighter, or darker and darker and darker, depending on how we move it. And what we're wanting to do here is we want to get we want to get this picture lightened up to the point that it looks like this picture. It's pretty close. 
I think the lightness is about right. It's a little bit lower in contrast. I'm not going to worry about the contrast because I found that these soft proofs don't do a good job of showing the final contrast. The soft proof always looks a little bit lower in contrast than what the final print's going to come out. So if I just deal with the lightness of the picture by lightening up the, lightening up the, if you lighten up the midtones, that kind of lightens the whole picture and leave the contrast alone, most times the print will come out looking perfect then. And so we've got these looking pretty close to each other as far as brightness. Yeah, let's see, maybe. Yeah, could maybe go a little bit lighter. I think that's good. Um, let's double check how the green one looks. Yeah, I think we're good. So now that we've got um, this looking like this one, we're going to turn the proofing mode off by going back up here to view and then unchecking proof colors. And you see now that it returns to normal. But now it looks it looks lighter than this one. Not a whole lot, it's a subtle difference, but it is lighter. That's okay, because when you make the print, it's actually gonna come out darker than what you see here. That's what the point of the proof, uh, the soft proofing was. It was to show you how much that darkening is gonna take place so you could compensate for it. So now that we have it um, soft proofed and corrected, now we can make the print. To do that, we go up to File, Print, and you get the Photoshop print settings. You choose the printer you're going to use from this menu here, and it's already set to Epson um, SureColor P800 because that's the printer I'm using. Um, print settings, we'll get to this in a minute. This is the printer driver settings. We're not going to mess with that right yet. Layout can be either vertical or horizontal. Now, if the picture in the preview here looks way too big or way too small because the paper size isn't set to the right size, um, don't worry about that. That's something that we'll set in the print settings when we get to that. Um, the next thing we need to do is color management. You have two choices under color handling. You have printer manages colors or Photoshop manages colors. When you're using ICC profiles, you want to use Photoshop manages colors. And then you do the same thing that we did when we set up the soft proofing. We have to choose the printer profile. So click this, and you find the exact same profile that you used for the proofing, which would be this one here. Um, next thing down is send 16-bit data um, is checked. If you have a 16-bit file, like my picture is, then definitely send the 16-bit data. If you have an 8-bit file, this will be grayed out, and you won't be able to make that choice. Next we have this here says normal printing, leave that alone. Rendering intent. Choose whichever rendering intent you use for your soft proof. If you use perceptual for your soft proof, choose that. If you use relative colorimetric, choose that. I use relative colorimetric, so we're gonna change that. Black point compensation should be checked. Um, position and size. The position I'm gonna show you in a little bit after we look through the printer driver. Um, Print size, um, I never mess with this stuff. As I said, you're better off resizing the picture in Photoshop before you get to the printing stage. So this you should leave alone. The positioning, though, is something you may want to change. Um, and I'll show you why in just a moment once we get to, the, to, the, uh, to that stage. Let's go up here to the print settings now. Now we're going to get into the Epson printer driver. Now I did, a, I did a tutorial on this several years ago, and this is a redo of that tutorial because... Apple has made changes to the operating system and the way that the printer drivers display. The stuff that's in this Photoshop print settings box back here really has not changed since my last um, tutorial was done, but the printer driver has changed substantially in the way it's laid out, and it may be confusing if you if you look at my older tutorial, trying to find those same settings in in the new um, in the new print dialog box that the Mac operating system uses. This was done with the, with the Mac Ventura operating system, which is the current version of the Mac operating system as of right now when I'm making this tutorial in August of 2023. So when this comes up, um, you can choose the printer again, and it should be set to the same thing that was chosen here. Um, copies, you put how many prints you want. Paper size, here's where you choose the paper size you want. I have US letter chosen, which US letter is 8.5 by 11, because that's what I'm going to use. Um, layout and paper handling, I don't mess with. Um, printer options, this is the, this is the important stuff here. Um, color matching, you'll see that this stuff is grayed out because 
you can't use that with ICC profiles. This stuff's not, not applicable to that. So it doesn't matter which one these are set at. They're grayed out. They're not used. So we hit OK. Printer settings. Um, paper source. Some printers have more than one way to insert paper in them. My Epson P800 has a regular um, sheet feeder at the top where you can put in a stack of, uh, stack, a stack of papers for it to, to uh, draw from. And it also has the front fine art slot, which is used for real thick fine art papers that are... The real thick papers can get jammed in the regular sheet feeder because they're because of how thick and stiff they are. The print, the paper I'm using, that Ilford um, Gold Fiber Gloss, is a thick fine art paper. So we're going to choose front fine art. Um, media type. This has, within these different choices, is a long list of every paper that Epson makes that's compatible with this printer. If you're using a paper that's made by Epson, just choose whichever paper it is you're using, and you're good. If you're using a non-Epson paper like I am, then you need to figure out which of these to choose because there are no there are no settings in here for non-Epson papers. And so what has happened is the manufacturers of the, of the other papers have done testing and they have, usually there'll be an information sheet in the box. Um, and if not, you can go to the manufacturer's website and usually find this technical information. They will give you a recommendation of which paper type to choose in the Epson driver. Um, what Ilford has recommended for the paper that I'm using is that you use the Epson Premium Photo Paper Glossy setting. So that's what I'm going to choose. Ink type is already set to photo black because that's the kind of that's the, the black ink that should be used with this glossy paper. Um, some Epson printers let you choose which ink to use. This one automatically chooses it based on the type of paper, whether you're using matte black or photo black. If you're if it's if your printer lets you choose, then you want you want to use the photo black ink for any kind of um, glossy papers, semi gloss papers, luster surface, pearl surface, that kind of stuff. All those kinds of papers that have shiny or relatively shiny surfaces, you want to use the photo black ink for. Anything that's a matte surface paper, like like a, a flat matte paper or a watercolor type papers or some of the cotton fine art papers that have a, a matte or textured surface, those use the those use the uh, the matte black ink. Um, okay, print mode. Print mode is grayed out because you can't make that choice when you're using when you're using uh, Photoshop manages colors. Color mode is automatically set to off, no color management because the color management is being done in Photoshop, so that's fine. Um, output resolution. You got two choices here. Um, on this printer, you can choose between fourteen forty DPI and twenty eight eighty DPI. In theory, the 2880 DPI should give you um, better image quality. In actual practice, with the paper that I'm using, I've never seen a difference. Um, the only difference is that the 2880 setting uses a little bit more ink and takes a lot more time. Now, you can try that with the paper you're using, or even try it, even if you're using the same paper I am. You know, make, a, make the same print with both settings and see which one you like better, but I'm pretty certain you won't see a difference. With some papers you might though, so try that with the papers you're using, do some test prints, see what works best for you. If the 2880 mode it does look better for you, um, and what you're looking for is whether you can see the little dots of ink. Um, they're, more, they're more or less microscopic anyway, so it would be difficult to see them, but if you, if, uh, if you have a paper where you can see the little dots with the 1440 setting, by all means use the higher quality setting if that gives you better image quality. I'm going to use the 1440 setting because it doesn't give better image quality with the paper I'm using. I leave high speed unchecked, mirror image unchecked, but I do check finest detail. Advanced color settings, there's nothing in here to set when you're using, when you're using ICC profile, so we can ignore that stuff. This is all set the way we want, hit OK. Um, if you're using roll paper, there's some settings in here that you might want to check and, and see that they that it's set for the correct size paper you're using and all that. I'm using individual sheets of paper though, so that doesn't apply to me. The next thing we want to look at is advanced media control. Now this stuff for color density and paper feed adjustment and whatever, don't mess with any of that stuff. Um, that never needs to be changed. The thing that's important here is the plate and gap. That's this right here. You have two choices, standard or wide. Standard is for thinner papers, wide is for thicker papers. If you put a real thick paper into the printer and use a standard plate and gap. It's basically the gap between the print heads and the paper surface. Sometimes the print heads can actually touch the paper and scratch it or smear ink on it, and you don't want that to happen. So if you're using a, a thick paper like like the paper the paper I'm using is a real thick paper, 
Most fine art papers are too thick to use the standard gap, so you're going to want to use the wide. So I'll choose that for this one. Hit OK. That's all we need to do in the printer driver. We're done with that, so we can hit Save. Now, look at your preview here. Once you've changed the, the uh, paper size to whatever the correct paper size is, you should see your whole image perfectly centered in the uh, larger paper size. And I generally recommend you make your prints smaller than the paper size. So if you're doing a, if you're making, say, an 11 by 14 print, don't print it on 11 by 14 paper. You need some white space around it, and there's two reasons for that. One is if you're going to frame the picture, you need a little bit of space for the, for the mat board to overlap the paper so you don't see the edges of the paper without actually covering up any of the image area. The other reason is if you're an artist like I am, you want to sign and title your pictures. The tradition of photography is to put the title under the lower left corner of the image in the white space. Not on the image itself, but in the white space, you write the title. The lower right hand corner in the white space under the picture, you sign your name. If you're doing limited editions, you would put the edition number in the center. And all this is under the image area in the white space. Now, the problem with the picture being centered is that you don't have necessarily enough space for this. You want the picture to be pushed up a little bit to give you more white space at the bottom. And you can, you can change that. We go down here to position and size, which I mentioned earlier we were going to talk about. Once again, I don't change the paper size, or the, the print size here at all. We don't mess with that stuff. But what we do look at is the position thing. By default, center is checked, so you get the pictures perfectly centered. We uncheck that, and then you'll see you can manually type in measurements in inches. Um, now this is in the American version of Photoshop. If you're if you're uh, if you you know if you're in a country that uses the metric system, it's most likely going to ask in millimeters. But we're using inches here, and by default, it's going to tell you whichever settings um, how far from the top the image is and how far from the left in order for it to be centered by default. I'm going to leave the left setting alone because I, I still want it to be centered left or right. But I want to change the vertical centering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from where it's at right now to a lower number. And I'm using 0.7 for this one. And we see that move the picture up where you still have a, a good white space at the top, but you have a lot more space at the bottom to accommodate that title and signature. And so once we've got that set, go back up here and make sure everything here is still set correctly. It is. So at that point, we're done. You click print, wait for your print to come out, and then see what you, see what you get. Um, once the print comes out, then what you want to do what you want to do then is, is uh, look at your uh, Look at the copy that you did of the original, the one that doesn't have the alterations done, the, the, the one that doesn't have the brightness correction done to it. Compare your print to that. They should look pretty close if you, if you did this right and everything worked out all right. If it doesn't look really close, then most likely, you know, make sure your, mon your monitor does have to be calibrated for this to work. If you have an uncalibrated monitor, um, none of what I've just taught you will, will be of any use to you because... All of it depends on the entire system being color managed, meaning you have to have a, pro a properly calibrated monitor and then the ICC profiles for the printer. If you don't have a calibrated monitor, um, you're basically just guessing on what you're going to get because the monitor may be too bright or it may be too dark. And most likely it's going to be too bright. M monitors come from the factory way too bright because people think that, pick that watching movies and stuff like that on it looks better on a bright monitor, which is true. But for photography, you don't want the monitor to be that bright. Because if you have a monitor that's too bright and you edit photos on it, they may look good on that bright screen, but when you print them, they're going to be very, very dark because the uh, because the monitor was was showing the picture brighter than it really is. So make sure your monitor is calibrated before you do any of this stuff, because otherwise you're not going to get prints that match your your uh, screen. If the monitor is properly calibrated and everything, though, um, the prints should should be pretty close. They're not going to be they're not going to be an exact match. That's impossible. It's impossible to, to make something that's on a, a, a screen that's self-illuminated look the same as something that's printed on a piece of paper and viewed by reflected light. That's It's impossible. But what you're trying to do is get it as close as possible. And this method will do that for you if it's done right.